Welcome back to Comic Book Savant. I'm your host, James Harris. This episode, I'm going to be doing one of many you'll be seeing in a series of season season finale or season reviews of um, the CW superhero shows. I follow and watch all of them, so I'm going to be doing a series of the reviews as the individual shows wraps up their particular um, their. Uh, current seasons. I'll be going back and doing a review of that particular season of the those um, shows. The first one I have for you is Legends of Tomorrow. <clears throat> this is um, season three of the show. I've been a huge fan of the show since the very beginning. It's kind of had um, a mixed reaction with fans across the board. Some people think it's uh, too over the top. It's a little cheesy. I really appreciate the show for that. They've, they've been really fearless with the show. I love how you get an expanded look at the DC universe through the eyes and you can jump through different time periods because they have that advantage of time travel. And I like the fact that they, with some of the other CW shows, they can tend to take themselves too seriously or they go to soap opery, which, you know, it's on the CW, which is to be expected. But I like the campiness of the show and just the fun nature. And they really, over the three seasons, I thought this show might not last even one season, but they kind of stuck to their guns and they've approved each season uh, currently and really have done a great job in building up the, the cast around the particular characters. Um, I love, <clears throat> and they took characters from that was left over from the other CW shows that they weren't doing much with and spun them out into this show with villains as well as the hero side hero characters. And it really has done a great job into service the overall CW universe because you can pull out characters that you're not using, throw them on this show for a season or so, really mature and grow those characters out. And then you could always pull them back into their their shows that they originally started in later if you choose to. So I really like that aspect of the show. But again, this season three dealt with, um, you know, they normally have different, you know, themes. Uh, season two was extremely strong because they kind of have their version of the Legion of Doom. So finishing up that season, <clears throat> um, it was a very solid season. I kind of was in a favor of how the how last last season ended going into this season and I felt like all the CW shows not just Legends of Tomorrow kind of started off rocky because they had these great cliffhangers to a lot of the shows ending their previous seasons and going into this season most of them were resolved in you know a episode two at tops I mean honestly the the Legends uh, <coughs> season premiere pretty much resolved everything within the first half an hour or 10 minutes of the first episode, which was kind of disappointing because I thought it was going to be a bigger part of the season. But in its defense, it really turned around and built up what the new um, the new mission was going to be going into the season and start building up immediately going into building up the new villain for the for this season, which was Mollus, which um, had to do with he was a demonic presence and it kind of had that more of a supernatural feel which they had not dealt with previously um, on the show you they brought back uh, Damian Dark which was part of the Legion of Doom that kind of spun out to be um, one of the lead villains in this season which was cool because um, Neil Mc, uh, McDonough is a great actor and he's done a great job from his appearances on Arrow um, carrying over to Legends of Tomorrow from last season and even continuing that and I loved how as a villain even though he he ultimately he wasn't the main villain Mollus was but he was kind of um, Mollus's henchman that um, they did a lot of character work with the Damian Dark character and um, he had a really awesome story arc through the season as a villain which sometimes you don't get to see especially most of the time with superhero movies <coughs> But it was good to see that Damien, as a villain, had a um, whole arc. You got to see more of what motivated him um, to make the choices and be the villain that he is throughout the season, which was really cool. Now we go back to our heroes with the the cast of the legends. You had some departures. We, you know, the most notable one that we knew going into the season was with Firestorm. Uh, Firestorm. We had. Um, let me make sure um, Victor uh, Garber, which is a very 
distinguished actor, which was kind of crazy that they even, you know, got him on the show and he stuck with the show for many seasons but he wanted to go back and do some Broadway and things like that and plus you know he's older and it's a lot of action though he split the scenes with the other part of um, Firestorm the actor um uh, Frank um was it Frank Darheem I hope I pronounced that correctly um you know they kind of split and they had a very great you know split when it comes to when they're joining as Firestorm it's more of you know, him doing the heavy lifting, being in the suit and things of that nature. Um, but just being a part of the show, he was a great anchor and was kind of like the soul to the the Legends cast. He, de you know, he departed during the season. Um, I really liked the way they handled it and they did it. It was very emotional. You know, we knew all the reports were, you know, like he was going to be, this was going to be his last season. Um, how they did it, how it was handled, even though you knew it was coming, was very emotional and was heartfelt how it was handled. I think it was handled extremely well. And, you know, it's always because they're time travelers. The one thing I do love, if it is beloved characters that leave at a certain point in time, it's always a chance because they're time travelers that they can find a way if the story permits to bring those characters back at, you know, at whatever point in time, which is always, you know, a good thing. I, I continue to feel like with the Legends cast uh, specifically, the anchors that really make this show and keep me invested in the show is um, Katie Lutz as Sarah Lance. She, I did not like her character, and I've stated this before. I wasn't a huge fan of her character when she was on Arrow as much, but over the three seasons of Legends, she's become one of my favorite characters in all of the CW Arrow I guess Arrowverse is what is really the term has been dubbed. She's become my favorite character over all of the whole CW Arrowverse. She's one of my favorites. And um, Dominique Purcell as Mick Rory or um, Heatwave. He, he's such a great character. I always tend to think of uh, Dominique Purcell as the role he played in Blade Trinity playing Dracula in that horrible movie. But he's really, you know, has grown as... Um, in his own and really has become heat wave for me and i wish like these actors weren't limited to just playing them on the television show i could see him play you know heat wave you know in a flash movie and it would just be so awesome but you know they keep these universes separate but he's just he's made that character his own over time and he's 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 that tough abrasive um presence that you need but then his comedic timing is so well and the great stuff how they've built his character throughout the three seasons as well they're really the the core of the showing what those are the two characters that most keep me coming back uh to the show not saying i don't like the ancillary surrounding characters and they added a new character um what's the actress's name um talia ash her name is um her name is talia ash she plays the character uh Zari Tomas. She's a new legend that they added this season. Um, I really didn't know where her character was going to go, but by the end of the season, she really had grown on me. She's really become integrated with the cast. So I like to see going forward into season four where they're going to go with her character and continue to build. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But all in all, this season is definitely um, has been been one of the better seasons because I think each season that the show has improved I think one of the the one of the things I will have to say negatively against this third season of the show I love the build-up to Mollus and it, they did such a great job with building him up through the season but then when Mollus is finally kind of unleashed and unveiled at you know at the end and especially how the confrontation with him was resolved was kind of silly I mean, it's par for the course with Legends because they do, again, they never take themselves too seriously. But the tone and build up for Mollus was super dark. So have, to have it kind of campy and kind of cheesy how it was resolved kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. But I accept it because it fits with the tone and what they do with the show from time to time. I would have to, if I had to rate this, I would give this an 8 out of 10. It's required viewing. It's really a fun show. Um, they really do a good job of jumping around in the time travel and character development. I've always been big as a comics fan on how the core characters and even the villains are um, developed. And they did a good job, like I said, with, with Damian Dark. He had a, a complete arc and kind of um, brought his story to a close of his arc that we first, you know, were... 
uh, introduced to him in Arrow to where he is now. I felt like he had a full arc and he became um, a, a fully realized character. And at points you felt sympathetic to him and kind of the choices he made and the regrets he had for making those choices. Uh, I love that, that arc with him and I, I'm going to miss Neil. Um, playing the character for now but again with time travel you just never know damien dark could always pop up again but it kind of seemed like they were bringing his art to a full conclusion kind of at this point but in the you know in the cw um, arrowverse never seen that never because we have alternate earths and time travel so anybody could be back on the board at any point in time um <clears throat> one thing that another one thing i could say negatively is that um they had a thing where I don't want to spoil too much because I do if you are not watching the show I want you to check it out they kind of did a, a thing where we saw another character kind of sacrifice themselves it did not land I think the way the writers intended because it didn't have any emotional resonance they kind of faked out or had this character do this role before in each of the previous like seasons at some point in the previous season this character sacrifices themselves and you think they're gone and then they always keen seem to be popping up and I kind of feel like you know I'm tired of seeing that especially with that particular character um, especially you know earlier in the season seeing the departure of Victor Garber as you you know um <clears throat> dr stein um and how that was handled so well to see this handled so poorly and plus seeing it with that same character where we've seen it before and it's so it's, it's one of those things where it's like is he really dead because we just you know you just feel like he's gonna pop up again because he always has so it didn't resonate because we've seen that card played so many times so i hope they kind of ease back with that and maybe they really give that character some time to breathe that not he will see that character pop up again the first episode of season four um we did set up some things where we saw constantine um incorporated in the show as a um guest star and guest appearance role in a few episodes this season they've already announced that he's going to be a season regular for season four so it's going to be some fallout from the repercussions of what they did in the season finale for season three leading into season four which brings in constantine which matt ryan is a really great i didn't watch the constantine tv show but he's been super popular and he brought that same actor back because the fans wanted him he's shown up on arrow he's shown this is not the first season he's popped up for an appearance um on um legends i don't think i think he's popped up time a time or two before again he's been on arrow a few times they're even they even gave him um since they're not bringing back the constantine tv show they are doing on cwc the animated series and he's voicing the character and i think uh, matt ryan even um voiced the character in the um Justice League Dark movie for the character. I'm pretty sure he, he did. So he's been very much connected to the character. So it's cool that they're bringing him back, and he's gonna be he's gonna be um, a regular on season four. So he's gonna be on the Wave Rider as a legend, which is gonna be really cool because I like his vibe as the character. Um, so again, highly recommend this series if you haven't watched the previous seasons. This is something worth checking out. You know, definitely try to see if you can find it on Netflix and you know catch seasons one through three. Um, I think there um, I think each season is about 16 episodes so you can probably um, three seasons you can get through it on a good weekend or through a week taking your time you can binge through it it's worth it again I give it an 8 out of 10 I highly recommend the show it's just fun if you like comic books uh, your comic book shows that are a little less serious a little less dark though it's definitely some dark themes in this particular season um, dealing with a demon like Mollus um, it's still just overall great fun and great character development and they did a great job with the characters and this and the cast themselves did a wonderful job as well so again definitely highly recommend uh, Legends of Tomorrow if you haven't tried it out and I'm stoked to see where they continue to go in season four because it's definitely gonna be some repercussions we saw from the very end of the season finale for season three that season four is going to be definitely going to be a, a fun one, um, especially adding Constantine into the mix because he's a total wild card. But if you're new to the to the show, definitely um, click the subscribe button down at the bottom. And if you haven't already, click the notification bell that will alert you when the newest episodes on Comic Book Savant will drop. Again, I'm your host, James Harris. That's all I have for you for this episode, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.